All right, when replacing the water pump, don't mess around with an aftermarket pump in my opinion. Get a pump from GM, and let me tell you why. This is a new GM pump for a 2012 Camaro SS. Uh, it's all new, pulleys on, it's got a new thermostat, it comes with new gaskets. You'll notice that a lot of aftermarket pumps cost the same or more than this pump, and do not include that, uh, the hardware. So let's take a look at this pump, and you will notice that it is pretty much identical to the Corvette pump. The biggest difference is the offset. You can see that the Camaro pulley is offset further away from the cylinder heads. So you're basically just going to take the four bolts off and put this pump on. This harmonic balancer you're going to take off and you're going to install our supplied balancer. Now that's true for the immediate future. Um, we we have some products in the works that might allow you to run any balancer you want but for right now we're running the truck f body balancer so that's a good, quick overview of the engine um, this is your fuel rail on the ls3 it comes out at a 90 degree angle to the fuel rail so we will supply you with a nylon fuel line that has a 90 degree end in it so it just comes straight back this is your brake booster. On the trucks, it has a separate uh, fitting that snaps in with an O-ring. On the LS3, it's molded right in to this canister. This is your oil pressure sensor. Uh, this is the large oil pressure sensor. You can see it's about the size of a quarter. The earlier style was about the size of a dime. It's a smaller sensor. They are not interchangeable. If you get one of our kits on an early engine, just swap it out for this sensor, they're cheap, and, and it'll work, it, it works fine. A lot of guys ask what this is for, this is where the trucks run their PCV, but the Camaro does not have the PCV in the valve cover, so just leave that as it is, sealed off. This is the flywheel you want. I've seen these engines come through with manual flywheels and pilot bushings, but obviously we don't need that with a 6L80. So if you don't get this flywheel, just get a standard flywheel for a half ton truck, 07 to 13, and you'll, you'll get the proper flywheel. A lot of these engines come through now with lift brackets, some don't. Try to get lift brackets to spread the chain from hitting the intake, especially on the truck motors. You don't wanna, I've seen a lot of fuel rails crack the intake when guys don't use the proper chain. The LS3 does require Dexos oil, which basically is Mobile One, 530 weight. Uh, ironically, the truck engines don't, even though they seem to be the same engine, but that's what GM recommends, so that's what I would run. And let's go back and look, some of the, look at some of the bracketry for this engine. All right, so the guy's got most of Grande Juan's parts laid out. Here's his old parts in these bins. There's his new radiator we'll be installing. We are going to, it looks like he might have ready, no, he's going to modify that fan shroud. Engine mounts are in. You know, also power steering pump is still on the vehicle. It has not been uh, taken off. No power steering fluid's been lost. Same thing with the brake system. Here's some parts we're gonna go over. All right. Uh, this is pretty simple. This is just a transmission mount. Use a heavy duty four wheel drive Chevy truck transmission mount. This is a factory style mount and the two wheel drives have one stud sticking down. I'm not a big fan of just running polyurethane or rubber biscuits or whatever. Um, this is this is the mount that was intended for this, this combination, so I suggest you run it. This mount came off of a Chevy GM truck SUV from uh, 7, actually earlier than 7. They go way back, uh, up to about 14. So it's an easy and inexpensive part to get. This is a our transmission dipstick tube seal and make sure you ask for that hat seal separate because it does not come with a with a tube and stick you will need that with a crate motor
Here's our tranny cooler lines. Use the lines that we recommend from the dealer. They run about 45 bucks. Here's our motor mounts. These are the factory OE hydraulic motor mounts with shields. They run about $100 each, but it is a it is a pretty uh, serious mount. It's liquid filled and it does dampen out most of the vibrations. Much better than, again, polyurethane or rubber biscuits or whatever a lot of guys are running out there. Uh, this mount is necessary for AFM motors, uh, MDS, DOD, whatever you want to call it, cylinder shorting. Uh, because when it goes into the four-cylinder mode, it uh, sets up vibrations. With a crate motor, you're going to need to get a new starter motor. So we use Delco. I don't like going cheap in starter motors. Don't don't get a Chinese copy. Uh, they do run about 160 bucks, but it's better than not being able to start your JK out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, this is a purge. This is a purge valve that we'll be using later for air conditioning. All right, let's go over some of these brackets. Here's our air intake tube. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Our mass sensor is going to mount in that. There's our the scavenge tube that I showed you earlier. This is our LS3 tube. Take a look at it. You'll notice that the the aspirator tube and the MAF are separated by quite a distance with a truck. The this would be over here, so you can easily identify the difference between the two. These are the plastic shields that go around the starter and the opposite side of the bell housing to seal it from dust. Here's our coolant bottle and it's already been mounted on our coolant mount bracket and this basically just slides into the factory fan shroud so there's no no drilling, cutting, hacking, just slide it in. We do use a, this is a stainless steel bottle, it's not aluminum. We found the aluminum bottles would oxidize and gall, so we've had no issues with the stainless bottles. And you uh, you want to uh, just slide this in the shroud and you're done. Here's our accelerator pedal, APP, accelerator pedal position sensor, mounted on the MoTeC bracket. And you'll notice the new brackets are slotted so that some guys have really big feet and want to move this over and I recommend you bring it over as far to the hump in the center as you can but I've had other guys uh, actually a couple of women that wanted it closer to the brake pedal for double pedaling so we've now made that adjustable this is a style of ECM bracket that we're going to use on this build uh, basically this part's going to hold the Bussman fuse block and this is going to hold the E38 computer so I have one installed here but not readily available. Uh, here's the plastic fuel line I talked about earlier. You notice this is an LS3 line because it has the 90 degree end on it. If this was a truck line it would have uh, a straight fitting. So let's talk about some of these other brackets. This is the, the main air conditioning bracket which is going to mount onto the lower driver side of the engine with three bolts. Now as indicated earlier, the iron motors do not have this hole drilled. Sorry, it's hard to, to look at this and look at the camera at the same time. Um, you're going to have to drill and tap that hole in the block. It's going to sit on the motor like this. Now, this is the crankshaft sensor holder, okay? You can also it has a nut plate on the back, and that's simply going to... Turn my phone off. You're going to mount your stock JK sensor in this bracket, then this bracket is going to mount into this bracket with a nut plate on the bottom, and it has a range of adjustability. Um, we'll talk about that later when we install the accessory drive. However, we're not going to be using this much longer. 
um, we've, we've, we've eliminated the crankshaft position sensor. So uh, we'll, for the purpose of this build, we'll show it to you. This is the lower transmission mount. And this is the upper transmission mount. Basically, these are going to go like this. And the cross member is going to be sandwiched in there. You'll notice that uh, we have these slotted side to side. And if you look at the cross member, it's slotted front to rear. So it gives you a whole range of adjustability for different transmissions. The stock transmission mount that you saw earlier is going to drop through these holes, the studs. But we'll show that to you in a later, in a later video. Okay, let's see. This is the hardware for the uh, ECM busman mount. This is a shift lever we supply you with so that the stock JK shifter has the proper ratios to get all the gears. This is the fan spacer kit and a lot of guys leave this out. Don't make that mistake because when you get the body on you'll be sorry. Basically, Oh, by the way, these are cooling flaps. A lot of guys with superchargers take these off. Put them back in because they do help cooling. So you're going to pull your fan blade off. You're going to pull the fan motor out. And essentially, you're going to install these spacers behind these ears, which will bring it up and give you more clearance between the water pump and the back of this fan motor and then reassemble, <coughs> reassemble everything like stock. This is our rear air conditioning bracket, which you will see later. This is also an air conditioning bracket. All right, so this is an LS3 alternator mount, and this is LS3 power steering mount. We'll show you how those go on in a different video. Here's the idler and spacer kit. Here's the hardware for your motor mounts. We use uh, acorn style nuts with washers built in. This is your transmission hardware. You'll notice there's a couple of spacers in there. Here's your air conditioning hardware. This is the, the, actually let's take a look at this. This is the newer style transfer case automatic transmission shift cable bracket. And what's new about it is this offset. We've noticed guys are running 1350 CVs and other drive shafts that, drive shaft setups that have large diameter tubes. And this transfer case bracket gets close to the, to the drive shaft. So what we do is we offset it in now, give you a little bit more room. With a 13 drive, 1310 drive shaft, you won't have any problems. With a 1350, this should be fine. Uh, you'll notice that this is independently adjustable for your transfer case. This mounts onto the side of the 6L80 and it's gonna hold your, your shifter cable. So those are the basic components of the engine and we're gonna follow up uh, in the next video with installing these components on the engine.